Hi guys, welcome to Greedy 3D. As you can see, I've got my Sulaco t-shirt on, so it must be something from Aliens. Sulaco, just remember that, Sulaco, it's animal. Um, today we're going to be doing, or I'll show you how we did, Bishop from Aliens, the artificial person here. One of the Aliens diorama. I am surrounded by Aliens bits and bobs. I've got an Alien Queen here, I've got Alien Queen legs there, I've got Alien bits everywhere and I couldn't be happier. I love my Aliens. I'll show you how we made Bishop today and I'll show you how I put it all together and painted it. I hope you enjoy it. If you like what you see please hit the subscribe button, please like and share, leave me a comment and if you want to join the Patreon you would be more than welcome. But let's see how we made Bishop. Stay tuned. Bishop has been printed on the Uniformation GK2 using some Sunlu Basic Grey and as ever this amazing printer has done a fantastic job. If you want to get one of these printers, if you can get one, get one because they are awesome. There's a link in the description. Just look at the detail on that. It's just incredible and it's basic Sunlu resin. This is the Wicked Bishop foil on a GK2 from Uniformation and the combination is as ever fantastic. Another one towards the diorama. And here he is, he's done. I've glued his arms together, but what I need to do now is just do some tidying up of those gaps, and I'm going to use my precision bottle there to cover all of that. Now I have done a video on these precision bottles and there'll be a link in the description as to where you can get them from. Check out that video, I'll put it at the end. This is a fantastic bit of kit and you know I harp on about it, but I love them, absolutely love them. And they do these seam filling jobs easily and well, seamlessly, <laughs> no pun intended there. Right, now everything has had a chance to dry and cure and I'm going to give it a base layer of just some black primer right the way across all of the models to give everything a good coat, cover all that resin up ready for the next job, which will be obviously the full paint work. And for his suit, for his uniform, I'm going to use some blue and some grey mixed together because I wanted a darker blue colour, almost like um, a, a sort of midnight blue. And that's the colour I've gone for with this mixture. And I'm layering it all across his uniform there. And that's how it looks. And I'm really pleased with the colour. There's some more work to do, but that's the base colour down. Now I want to protect it with some Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear and I'm going to give it a blast across that and then I am going to leave that to dry and that's his uniform protected for the next layers. Now for some Nomad Flesh is my usual flesh tone and I'm going to be using that for the arms. You'll notice that I've masked everything off to protect that work that I did before and I'm going to give his arms a real even layer of this colour right across. I might leave a little bit of the black coming through just for some shadowing. There's an awful lot of uh, external work going to happen on these arms because he's he's going to have some dirt on there. He's going to have some of his, his bloody white, uh, whitey blood stuff all over there. So I'm just going to give them a base layer of the, uh, of the Nomad again on his neck as well and of course also on his face which will have a little bit more of a detailed layer across. Now if you look at the face there's lots of that marks on there where his, uh, his blood's going to go but that's the first layer of the Rust-Oleum all over there in a nice even coat. Make sure to cover pretty much all of it. Same again for his, uh, his giblets, for his his innards give the outer layer of that a skin tone. Now moving on to Wildling Flesh, I'm going to give it a higher lighted tone from the top down on his head and from his arms, if you imagine that's the position, he's going to be lying just from the upper part of his arms just to add a little bit more depth and sort of sunlight effects to where the skin would be in the sun and again on the edges of his, uh, of his torso there. Now once it's had a time to dry, I'm going to take all the masking tape off and as you can see everything's protected and those are the base layers. I'm really, really pleased with how that's looking so far. And I'm going to take my Rust-Oleum once again and I'm going to cover all that skin up to make sure that all the work I've done so far is protected. When you start to handle it in the painting stages, you don't want it to come off. You want it to be there and stay on there ready for the next level. Now this is called Bleached Bone, but it should be called Android Innards because this is what I'm going to be using to give Bishop his signatory white intestinal look. And I'm using my airbrush to just direct this carefully 
and accurately inside his, uh, his guts in his giblets to give him all those pipes and wires that you, you know so well from the movie. I try not to get it all over me pink and that's what I'm left with at the end. That's a perfect colour. I'm really, really chuffed with it. There's a little bit more work to do to it, don't you worry, but that's the overall look we're going for, that white inner look that you're used to seeing in the Aliens movie. And I'm going to take some of this Tesseract Glow here. It's one of the Citadel colours and I'm not going to use too much of it, but I just want to give him a little bit of a, a kind of a yellowy, gruesome look and I think I've achieved achieve that with that colour. Again, really pleased with how that's turned out. Now, what I want to try and do is make him look slimy and wet and oozy. So I'm going to use some of this metal varnish. This is gloss varnish, not matte. And I'm going to liberally apply this. I'm going to give him stacks and stacks of this stuff just to get him to look like he's all slimy and wet and horrible. And that's worked an absolute dream. Don't use matte varnish, use something shiny. And there we go. You can just see him glistening in the light. Yuck. Perfect. Now, same again for the centre part of him here that's been ripped apart by the Queen. Um, I'm going to do a bit more work on this with the brush stage, but I want to put some white and some yellow on there just to give it the same look, and I'll varnish it too. Now for the face, moving on to the brush work, and I'm going to put some red wash across his face first around the eyes and around the head and around the lips just to give a little bit of color to him now, there's a lot of whitey sort of uh, blood going to go on top of him but i want to give him a red look underneath to start with and of course the secret with these washes is to do little and often so i'm going to put a wash on i'm going to let it dry then i'm going to go back and put another wash on just while the head's dry and i'm going to go on to the hands and the arms and i'm just going to do exactly the same to those to add a little bit more color and a little bit more depth to the skin and flesh of his arms back to the head and exactly the same again as I said a few layers of that red wash going on concentrate under the eyes concentrate around the cheeks and the lips and around the hairline we just want to take away from that fairly plain skin color that he's got and give it a little bit more life and a little bit more blood well not so much blood but blood effect I guess in Bishop running under the surface now for the eyes I like to do a black layer in the eyes first not everybody does and you don't have to do this but I like to do it because I believe it gives you a little frame to paint the eyes around and when you add the white in it gives you a lovely black eyelinery kind of effect so I'm using a really narrow brush to do that and I'm using an even narrower brush to paint the teeth now the brushes that I'm using using were gifted to me and there'll be a link in the description where you can get them from and I love these brushes they're not expensive at all they hold their shape and they're so so narrow you can get into all the little nooks and crannies they're really really good now um, for the lips I'm just using a pinky red color and I'm going to go around the lips first of all with that color a little bit more work will be done on them later but they're having a base layer on the top and bottom of that pinky color and I'm just going to touch any of the white that I might have overspilled in the teeth with that and that frames the teeth wonderfully now the white is going on the eye, it's not pure white, it's white with a very, very slight hint of grey in there. Um, on this scale model, it's not utterly important, you could get away with white, but I just want to give it a more of an accurate, detailed look, so I'm going to use the white. Now don't worry about that face at the moment, I know he looks like something out of a mask, like he stepped out of a circus. We're going to do a little bit more work with the bottom and the top of those eyes, and I'm taking a skin colour with a hint of pink, and I'm just going to paint the bottom parts of his eyes I'm going to water it down I'm going to merge it in I'm going to use a little bit of pink I'm going to use a little bit of skin color and just on the very very lower lid I'm going to use a little bit of a fine line of red just to frame the eyes again when you look really really close it looks a little bit strange as soon as you pull away to normal distances it looks absolutely fine keep going with the pink and the skin color till you merge that all in and until you're happy with the result and then I'm going to put in the irises. Now Bishop is lying on his back looking up and left. So that's where his irises are going to go to start with. And just semi-circle them. Take your time. Use one of those really narrow brushes. And that's the kind of look I'm, I'm going for. I'm fairly happy with that. A little bit more work to do on the eyes. Take away that eye shadowy look at the top. But I'm quite happy with that. Now his lips, while the eyes are all dry and are getting a light coat. Just using a lighter pink on the top of the bottom lip and the bottom of the top lip. Just to make them look a little bit more pizzazzy. And I'm going to put a dark blue in his eye. 
followed by a light blue and then a pupil and that's his eyes pretty much done now nearly finished i've got to do the top of the eyes i'm going to put a bit more of a skin tone over there looks like he's wearing a bit of eyeshadow there so i'm going to fix that and at the end i'm going to give them a gloss varnish too now for the hair i'm just using martian brown and i'm using a really really fine brush to start with just to layer around the inner parts of the hair just to keep it off the face and once i've done that i'll move on to a big brush and i'll just get that hair on there nice and thick cover all the pink from the skin that's overflowed and any other color on there let's just get his hair on and that's what bishop looks like his eyebrows have got to go on which i didn't catch on camera but the eyebrows will go on really really well follow the uh, marks that are already there and then uh, while that's drying i'm just doing a bit of the sundry work i'm just going to paint his uh, watch strap black because that sticks out like a sore thumb now i'm going to dry brush his uniform here now a um, little bit of a competition for you guys here something is wrong with bishop's uniform if you can tell me if you're one of my subscribers and you can tell me what the problem is with his uniform i will send you a free gift so just drop me a message in the comments what you think is wrong with bishop's uniform and i will send you a nice freebie it'll be a surprise I don't know what it's going to be yet but i'm going to send you something in the post free and that's me dry brushed his top and then i'm really really chuffed with how it looks even though there's something not quite right greedy three dears chuffed with how that looks there now i was worried to death about doing this because i thought i'm going to ruin my face all that hard work but of course in the movie he's covered in his synthetic person blood so that's what i've used just some thick white here and i've popped it on there and i'm again I'm so, so pleased with how he looks. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces to do regarding the uh, synthetic blood. So I'm gonna take a big thick brush, cover it in white paint, water it down a little bit, and I'm gonna flick it on him to make it look like he's been splattered, as you know that look in the, uh, in the main movie where he gets ripped apart by the queen. We want plenty of this white painty gunk on him. And again, on the face. So we just add another layer of that white to the face. And that's nearly done. We've nearly finished him. He's looking really, really lovely now. Here's all the paints that I used to do Old Bishop, and I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget, uh, if you like what you see today, subscribe to the channel and let's have a little look, see what he looks like. Well, there we go, Greedy 3 Ds. I hope you enjoyed the making process of Old Bishop there. Um, if you did like what you see, please leave me a comment. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share with your friends. Really would be appreciated. I want to take a moment to thank the Patreons. Without you guys, all this would be so, so much more difficult. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to join the Patreon scheme, all the links will be in the description below. Come and join the Greedy 3D team. Come along. We'd, we'd be more than happy to have you. Hope you've enjoyed today. See you next time. Alien Queen next time, I think. We'll see if we finish it in time. I'll see you next time on Greedy 3D.